twice in here, my boys. Okay, I am super stoked for today's lesson, and I hope that you are also equally amped up and ready to rock. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, you in the back. Uh, no, I, I know his name. I know everybody's name in here. Uh, I can attest to that. I have proof. Uh, okay, so today we are learning about routing. Right? Have we noticed that every application we've ever been to essentially is multiple pages, but the apps we've been building lately are just singular pages, yes? Uh, and so before we were doing a tags with an href and jumping to another place, and we saw this beautiful little um, whirly gig in the top left would do a refresh, right? So something about React is that React is called a single page application. I don't know if, if you've heard that before or not, but you should know that it's a single page application. Pardon my handwriting. I'm not Phil. Phil has beautiful handwriting. If you ever get the opportunity to whiteboard from Phil, know his unbelievable handwriting. Uh, also often referred to as just like an SPA, or a spa treatment, yeah, uh, spa. Um, so React is always a, 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 a single page application. Now the idea is that we are going to make it look like it's multiple pages, right? So this kind of goes to the idea of before when we would say like, hey, if this thing is, is in state, go ahead and show this page, else show this component. Is that, we kind of remember that when we, would, we made that toggle to toggle something to show if it exists. It was the clock. We toggled the clock, right? Um, so that's kind of the overall background of what today is. But before when we were toggling, nothing changed here. It always said localhost 3000. I can't make that, that part bigger, I don't think so. I'm sorry about that. Um, but to the user, they want to be able to see where they are, right? We're used to that experience when we go to facebook.com slash, if I go to John's page, it's going to say slash John or something, right? That's kind of the familiar behavior. Even if, if you're looking at like the React docs, right? Like this is react.org, but then we're saying slash docs because we're in the docs slash Hooks reference.html, so it's kind of telling us, like okay, I was reading about hooks, specifically use ref, which has the tag here, right? So it's giving that user information just so they can see what page they are on from the top. Okay, so that's what we're going to build today. Uh, if you are following along, I would just make a few quick kind of dummy components, like a home. And <coughs> clock and like you could just say I'm a clock right let's go ahead and do a home together and then you can go ahead and add on to it more uh, so in my components here I have pushed all of this already uh, in preparation for the lecture so you can also just follow along by pulling your cloned copy yeah uh, okay so I'll make my new file and I'm gonna call this home.js now my home's really not going to do a lot of stuff, right? It's just going to import React from React. I'm going to call it home. It's not going to take anything in. And I'm just going to render a div that says home component. Let's say home comp. And I'm going to export that. Okay, so you can feel free to make a few components like that if you are working in your own separate app instead of the electronic one. Well, I'm just doing an implicit return here. That's why I don't have the word return. Because um, I'm not using curly braces, I'm not using parentheses, it just automatically returns everything. It wouldn't allow me to do like logic in there, but it does allow me to just make a div. Yeah, sure. In app.js, you can't do like regular 
E6 functions, you have to put them outside of a method on the class. Uh, what do you mean? Like, if class, if app was a class. Yeah, I can make that a class. Now, if you then did a function, would it have to be in a method? It would be like all of the classes where you write the name. Just like a uh, clock, <coughs> right? It would be like the same as this where we would name things. Okay. Or our form where we named handle change. It'd be the same. Okay. A class so is a class. Is a class. Uh, we would do const if we were inside of a functional component. But we haven't really explored that yet. Okay. Who said that? Yeah, Rafi. We're just doing home and form, right? Uh, I'm doing, I have home, form, clock, and dog app here, but you don't have to have everything. It's, you'll get the concepts from just having a couple things. Actually, I could do stuff like this. Method. That's just putting a function inside of a function. Okay. And, and then I could call it. That's a, we'll see that a lot more probably Saturday. I think I'm going to introduce hooks on Saturday, so, so get excited because hooks are going to like rock your world, okay? Yeah, they, hooks, hooks legitimately is just going to be great and you're going to have so much fun with them. Um, yeah, and it might help to make some things as a class first and then update it to hooks, which that's how we'll learn. Cool? Capiche? All right, let's go ahead and import our home here. So import home from dot slash component slash home. And I'm just going to make my home here. Okay, cool. All right, so now we've got also that home gone. So hopefully... A lot of this page looks familiar to you. These have been the things we've built down over this unit, some of the things. We had our form. I don't know if you guys remember this form. It didn't do anything when we submitted it. All it did was print our, oh, it needs me to agree. Great, that still works. And then it just logged in the console um, some information. This is, this is what we said we would pass to the back end and then that we added our back end, which we'll also learn how to do very soon. We're going to attach our back end. So that's, that probably will be Saturday too. That's really easy. Um, that's that's like you can connect your back end and front end in about 10 seconds. So it's just adding something to your package. So I just don't have a back end to play with right now or I'll show you right now. Uh, okay, and then we have our clock component. This should be familiar. If you remember, we had a clock that we added and took off, yeah. And we also had this, we built this Monday, right, where we selected different breeds and showed, well, I chose a, and, and showed pictures based off of those breeds. All right, familiar? We're, we're not confused what we're seeing on the screen, right? Uh, and this is coming all in our app. So, so sometimes it's nice to show things based on what page you're on, right? Um, so we can do that in a couple ways. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to import uh, React. Router DOM. Okay. So let's go ahead and install that. I'll just go over to mine here. And I will empty on install React Router DOM. There are other routing libraries as well. This is not something that's part of React. This is something that uses React. Uh, although this is very widely used, this library. Actually, I think the guy who made this made another library because he went a different direction from what the company he started. Uh, I don't know. Or? What? 
Can what about the home data? Can I see the Oh. Sure, there's literally nothing going on in there. React router dump. NPM install. install. So yeah, we're going to install that. I uh, could write that to be a little more clear. Install, yeah, it's just like any package. It's a third party module. And React Router DOM is going to supply us with a few different things. Um, the things we're going to focus on today are, this is going to be a nav link. Link. Uh, link and nav link are essentially identical. One is good for using it in the nav bar. Uh, we will focus on switch today. We will focus on router. And last but not least, we will focus on browser. Or this is actually route. I apologize. Route and <coughs> browser router. Okay. I think this is all we focus on today. All right. So we're going to touch about five newish things. Uh, we'll also get new props from this as well. That will be, will be fun. We good so far? We all on the right same page? You created yep. the clock.js and all of that in this React app, or you pulled it from? I copied it all okay. over. And did that. Yeah, yours does like the functionality of the components is almost irrelevant. I just ha I just have them there. No, I thought you were like in the lesson you were like grabbing it from a different React app. No, I did all that beforehand. Okay. I wasted a bunch of time, okay. uh, and then I thought I uh, probably could have just made five dummy like home profile. I could have probably just done that faster. But we are where we are now. Uh, okay. So things to know, there's a couple different syntaxes for route. Okay. Uh, React Router DOM recently changed the documentation in September of last year. So we're talking very, very recent. Um, so I want to teach you kind of like both the older and the newer way of writing it. Um, Probably focus more on the older today, and then after we have an introduction to hooks, focus more on the newer, because the new one uses hooks. Okay? So just full transparency. The stuff we're learning today is going to be slightly out of date, uh, but still good to know because a lot of apps use that, and while we're in class components, this is the way we would write it. Okay? Uh, okay. So... We have to wrap our entire application and browser router in order to have access to all and use all of this routing. So I'm going to go ahead and do that inside of my index.js. I could do this in app as well if I wanted to and just have that be the encasing, um, encasing tag. But I personally like doing it in here. So we say import. And we do object destructuring for this one. Browser router uh, from React router DOM. Um, you can name, you can give nicknames to the things that you import as well. So, like if I'm not so in love with the word browser router, and I just want to think of this as router. I could say, just like as we do in SQL, I could say like as router. Okay, so I'm going to do that because I, I just like the word router more than browser router, but yours will work just fine with browser router as well. Okay, so instead of rendering our app here, I want to render our, uh, well, I'm going to call mine router. You might want to call yours router or browser router. Up to you. And it's a not a self-closing tag, but it's going to wrap our entire application. So this type of 
this is a high order component. Essentially, this is a function that takes in another function and provides it. So Redux has a thing that does something very similar called the provider, where it keeps us an application-wide state to give access to all the components. Um, they're pretty easy to write our own. Um, maybe we'll do that in a different different day, not today. But that's all that this is doing. This doesn't affect, like you, we can see, it doesn't affect the look of our application whatsoever. It just is now allowing us to use these types of things. Yep? I, I am. I have two shells open. Thank you. All right, so line six is the new line there. Any questions on that one? So this allows us to have different things in our props, potentially like history and match with params, path. We'll see all those um, today. Okay, so let's go back to our app. And now we can start to use some of these things. So I think it's going to be best if we make a nav bar first, because then we'll be able to jump around a little bit easier instead of constantly updating the top, because I know I'm not that great of a typer as is, right? So before we go too far, let's go ahead and make another component that we call nav bar. And a nav bar is something we want to always have access to, right, throughout the entire app. So let's go ahead and import React from React. Or const nav bar. It doesn't take in anything. I could do an implicit return here, or I'll just write it regular here. Um, okay, so a nav bar, if we're wrapping one and closing tag, what's the tag we should use? Well, every React component has to have just one enclosing tag that wraps all the children. What would be the best thing? Nav. Nav? nav? Yeah, right? Nav, because this is a nav bar. So keep those types of things in mind, right? They don't have to be divs. We, we seem to use divs a lot, or we use React Fragment. It is okay to use things like header and main. It's They're all still just one tag. All right, so we have a... Let's go ahead and make some links. So I'm going to import. First, I'm going to do this with regular link, and then we will update it to be the nav link. Uh, import, I'm going to say link, the structure, uh, no e, that's, that's my own misspelling, from React router DOM. Okay, so the syntax for this one is not too bad. Looks a little bit like this. They are self-closing. These are also a wrapper component. All it's doing is wrapping another component. Um, you can even, if you go, you should check out the docs for React Router DOM. You can look those over and they can show you how you can even make your own like authentic authentication routes and whatnot. Um, that's something that's fun to make is auth routes and protected routes. Because when you're logged in, right, you never can see the login page. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. You've never been able to see your profile page if you're not logged in. So those are called auth routes and protected routes. But you have to write those yourself. Um, but not today. Okay. So syntax. Yeah, repeat. In the index.js, when you write React <coughs> Excuse me, the import the browser router. Mm -hmm. What else do you have to do? Because like, my thing still just works. It's not highlights. It's not highlights? Like, after you install React Router DOM, can you just you import it in index? All we did was just wrap or wrap it. Mine's called router just because I said as router, but yours could say browser router, browser router. Oh, okay. No, I forgot to put the add browser. Okay, well you don't have, oh, if you use, if you say the word router, you have to say it. All right.
Okay, let's keep going. So the syntax for this is I'm going to say link. I want to say where I want to link to. So we say to JSX. Um, so for this one, let's say I want to link to just regular slash. And I would say that that would take me home. All right, you know how sometimes you have a home link that takes you all the way back home, right? That's all this would do. So let's make a couple more of these. Uh, make it, so for me, I'm going to say slash clock, and I'm going to say I'd want that to show the clock for slash uh, form. All right, this is just the text. It's not actually showing the component. We'll see what this actually does. Form, uh, what else do I have? I have dogs. Say dogs. All right, so these are just links that I've I've made up. I'm gonna export my nav bar. Bless you. You're welcome. Um, do we have something like that for ours? Yeah? Can I move on or not yet? Yes. What do you mean? Yes, let's do that. That's the next step. So now that we've got a nav bar, let's go ahead and import that as well into our app. Great. So we've got it. They're all up there. They're jammed together on the side. Looks super duper ugly. But we can see them. And at, if we click them, if you watch your URL, we click dogs, it now says slash dogs. We click form, it says slash form. Clock, it says slash clock, and home, it just goes back to being slash. All right, so it's working. We're not controlling at all what we see. We're seeing everything, but now we have a way to navigate, to show the user of something changing in the URL. Right, let's go add a little bit of style to our nav bar, because this looks terrible. I think we can agree on that. Um... I don't think this requires a ton of styling. I'm just going to open up a new folder. I'll call this CSS. And inside of there, I'll make a new file called navbar.css. I'm just going to make my nav have a display. Nave. Thank you. Let's just display flex. Justify content. What makes sense? Yes, I'm going to do space around. Okay, so now we've got a nav bar. Let's go import that CSS. Nav bar .css. Uh, yeah, you don't export from CSS. No problem. Sure. Just doing a couple properties. Or yours can be whatever. Yours doesn't have to mirror mine. Um, this isn't part of the new stuff. So, okay. Now we have our 
nav bar, and it's a little bit spaced out, a little bit more readable, and we can still click everything and see that things work. Okay, um, have you ever noticed when you're on a lot of websites, if you're on a specific page, it tells you what, what link you're on? Have you ever seen that? That, so like if I was on clock, clock would be styled differently than the rest. Have we ever seen something like that before? Okay, so that's one of our differences between nav, uh, nav link and link. So nav link, when you are active on that link, it creates a class identifier called active and we can style that okay so instead of these being link use link in your projects but in your nav bars use nav link okay so let's go do that so instead of link here everywhere where I have the word link I'm going to update that to nav link still follows the exact same syntax there where we say to and then where we want that link to take us. Uh, but now we have this active class for any link we're on. So we can go ahead and style that. So inside of my navbar CSS, I'm going to say dot active and I'm just going to make the color, let's say green. People say, oh, is blue, blue green, is that a colorblind thing? No, it's red green, right? The main one. Is anybody colorblind in here? And okay with sharing that? No. What? The main one is green and red, right? The uh, anti-Christmas colorblind people. Uh, okay, so we've got this active property. So when we do that, we see when we're on home, Home is green. When we go to clock, clock and home is green. When we go to form, form and home is green. And when we go to dogs, right, dogs and home is green. What's the bad behavior? Yeah, we don't want home to be green all the time. Can anybody tell me why home is green all the time? Yeah, Isaiah, you want to take a shot? Um, because it has that slash because the link has the wrap so that it's like the bottom doesn't have that slash, I'm assuming that it'll count as active. Yeah. That's pretty much it, right? So. Uh, it matches the path, right? It's a partial math match for the other ones. But for home, every path has that, starts with that exact same slash. So as far as that link is concerned, home is active. It, that path matches our real path. There is a positive match, okay? The reason I'm really going into this is because this also is going to relate to what we are doing when we move into the more specific routes. Uh, when we go to clock, form, dogs, those don't match each other because it's looking for that whole word. But for home, it does match. So there's a pretty easy fix for this, which we can say if we want it to be just a path match or if we want it to match the exact path. So now home should only be green if it's exactly the same path. Let's check our work. Uh, we are on dogs, dogs is green, home is not green, home is now green, clock is now green. So now it works. So now we don't get this false positive on our home. Any questions on that? Yeah. Oh, I had a move where you put the clock 
Oh, it's just great. I put the active class. The active class is given to us automatically by NAV. Okay. And so I'm just specifically styling it and making use of it in our CSS. Great question. Right, so I'm not telling it that that class name is active. That's just being given, that's built in. That's kind of just part of that magic. That's one of the things that makes React so nice. Any questions on, any other questions on this? Can I see the um, exact two part? Yep. Right, so they're all just two. This is just happens to be another property that says exact. It's spaced, right? The space is on either side of it. Pretty sure you can move exact to after two if you want. It doesn't really matter. It's just an attribute that's being passed in. But I like it before because to me it reads more like English. And it gives me what I think to be the more important information out front. Are you getting um, a warning in the console? Am I getting a warning? Yeah. Nope. I am. What's your warning say? Uh, receive the true for non boolean attribute. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I get it on home. I don't seem to get that. We can dive into that later. OK, so now we've got this working. Uh, if there's no other questions, we'll move to the next section. If there is questions, let me know. All right, cool. Let's keep going. Uh, OK, so what's the negative about our app right now? What's the main negative? You ever feed? It's not really doing anything for fun. Yeah. Perfect. Right? It's not doing anything. It's changing the URL, but nothing is happening for us as users. Right? So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to import route. Import route from React router DOM. Alright, so just so we're keeping up where we are, we've gone through this one, this one, and this one. We have just route and switch. Okay, so route is a. Well, I don't want to give you the wrong information. Route has recently changed to be a opening and closing tag. Previous to that, it was a self-closing tag. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the previous first. Okay, uh, yeah, this is going to be a little interesting because of all the changes. Um, but that's, you know, you got to learn all of it anyway, but there's not a great way of displaying because we're like, we want you to know the most recent, but also got to know the less recent as well. Okay, so let's go and create a route just for our home. So I'm going to say route. Okay, so let's make a small rule right now. So if your component is functional, you will do your routes this way. Okay, so we'll make it we have an opening and a closing tag if it's a functional component. Because in the because yeah, I'll show that in a minute. Because in the future, all of your components are going to be functional. Come Saturday when we introduce hooks, we won't really be writing classes anymore, except for maybe on the error boundaries lesson. That I'm going to write, it. but. So then we'll always be using routes this way. But for now, this is only for functional components. OK, so I, so I can say inside of my route, when the path, so I specify the path, when my path is slash, I want to show this home component. 
Okay. This is the new way of writing it since September. Okay. Anything that's been written prior to September will not be written like this. Yeah, it will. Does it have to be on the map bar on the query? Interesting question. Will said, hey, do we need a router on the nav? Who can answer that? For feed? I'll say no. Why? Because you can have other places on the website where your router is pushed to. So if you go to the you know, like a social media app if you're trying to route to someone else's profile, it doesn't have to be on that can be in your environment. OK. Yeah. Isaiah? So we want the nav bar to be on every page. Yeah, I like that. Your your everybody's answer is right, but that that answer is very uh, concise, right? What route would we want the nav bar to appear? If the answer is all of them, then we'll just leave it as is. Because no matter what, we want to have that nav bar. We don't want to get stuck on a page. We want to be able to navigate to a different page. OK. So once again, this is the new way of writing Rout. Uh, I'm not going to show you yet quite what happens, just because the other things aren't in routes, so we'll still see everything. So let's put the other things in routes. Form was a class component that we wrote. So this is how. You write it for class components. This is the older way. So you say route. Still is path. You still say the path. So slash, we said form. But it is self-closing. We'll get rid of the form. Uh, how do we connect the form? There's a couple different properties you can use for route. Um, I'll show you the other one a little bit later. But for this one, we'll just say component. Component. Make sure you spell that correctly. JSX, and then we go ahead and say which component we want to show. So form. So whenever we go to this route with the path form, we want to go to, to that component. Okay, this is what the route expects, used to. Uh, it still will work though, because they didn't like. They don't want every app that ever people ever use to break, right? That's a huge change. Even React itself said they're not removing classes from React yet. Like they won't for a long time. It's, hooks are backwards compatible. You can start adding hooks in your app without making any changes. Like it doesn't get rid of classes. So React Router also wouldn't want you to destroy all of your applications by changing their API. Clock, was clock a class? Yes. OK, so if clock, clock was a class, we're going to go ahead and say route path jsx slash clock component and we say we want that to show the clock. And we get rid of that. And our dog app, that was definitely a class. Oh, yeah, you should know I made a small change to our dog app. Because um, this, all this information used to be in our app.js page, I instead just made another component that imports the dog selector and the dog breed. That's the only difference, because I wanted our app to be clean. Um, but it is still a class component, so let's go ahead and write the old way of writing this, which is route path slash, uh, I think we, call, we can say dog seems like a good route, component and we'll say that we wanted to show the dog app, self-closing. All right, personally, I think the old way is a little bit cleaner, but that's not how they write it now. So it is what it is. Yeah, Doug? Can you pass to the component? No. 
But why would you want to? What? I didn't do it like you did. I still, I still have uh, thoughts. Oh. Well, you can pass two components, put two components in here. So if you, you can write it the new route way. Right? I could add another component here. Like I know we, I've been telling you it's for classes, but that's because of some other information that I haven't really told you. You can also like go like clock. Here, that's fine. That's two components. So you you can do it that way, uh, and we can prove that. So now that we've got our routes, let's see what happens when we're on the slash. You see, now we have home component and that clock because that's on that slash, and we said that we wanted to show the home component and the clock only. Any questions on that? Doug, you got that right. Okay. So when you do it like that, clock is also going to show for slash. Yes. And for, and for slash clock. clock. Yeah. So clock will show. Th these are two different. This is just the same component a couple times. But you know you can make multiple. We can reuse components. So this would just reuse the components. But I'm going to remove this because I don't really want it to be too confusing. I'm just showing a way that you can pass two components inside but I don't want it to be too confusing with our clock it'd probably be better to double the home if anything okay so now we have two home components any questions on the sofa all right yeah Phil Well, these were all other components that I imported. Okay. I might not understand the question yet. So when you actually are running that, and it shows up on your browser, you can just do that on the browser. Okay. All right, yeah. Okay, so, right, this is the newer way of writing it. This is the older way of writing it. You could still pass a functional component in like that, but what's the point? Because we might as well write them like how they're currently being written. Um, but, and you could also pass a class component here, but you won't have access to all of the parameters and things, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Yeah, Deja. Why would you need two home components? I wouldn't. I'm just making a point that I can show more than one component. Good question. Nope. No. In the, you still specify the path every time. So if, if I wanted the next route for forms, it would be route path. Uh, slash whoops slash form and it would be like that right so I'm still rewriting route can you show your web page yep does your home still show when you go to the bar? right so we're, we're gonna we're not quite there yet oh. I just want to make sure everybody's at this point I like that question that's, but that's you're one step ahead. Are we all are we all here? Yeah. Okay. So let's keep going. So let's go ahead and jump to clock. Uh oh. So I now see my home component two times still, but now I also see the clock. And when I go to form, I now see my home component and the form. And when I go to dogs, I see my home component and the dogs. What's wrong? What, see, huh? Right, but why? 
Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, Doug? Yeah, because it's just a slash, right? Say it's the exact same bug as we had from the nav bar. Literally the exact same one solved with the word exact, right? It is that is a path that matches the path. It is included within the path that we're on. So how can we change this? The exact same way, right? With exact. So we throw exact in front, and now we've got our dog breeds we can look at. We've got our uh, clock. We've got our form. Everything is cool. Okay, so that's route. That's the main point of route. Any questions on the route? Okay, so, so there's a, I'm going I'm to do this one other thing first, and then we'll go look at a couple other route cases. Uh, I want to talk about switch. So what does switch do? Switch renders one component inside the switch. Allows for only one component. Okay, switch allows for only one component. So let's see what I mean by that. Let's go ahead and import switch. Note that it's also capital. Switch. I am going to add everything a switch here. Let's say switch. Uh, it's not self-closing. Okay, and I'm going to slide my switch all the way down to the bottom. I'm even going to put my nav bar in there for now, just for fun. Okay, so if this was our switch, what do we see? Well, what do you mean by nothing? Just the nav bar. Why do we only see the nav bar? Because it's the first one. Is the nav bar getting to be shown because its route is unspecified? Switch shows how many components? Okay, so that makes sense. Let's move nav bar out of switch because it doesn't have a route associated to it. That seems like that would be wildly unhelpful, yeah? Okay, so now we've got a different route. And I go here and we got our home showing. And I go to clock and we get our clock showing form. Everything seems to work normal. If I forgot to put exact here and I save that, what do you expect the page to show when I click on the lock, clock? All right, turn and talk. Talk to your neighbor. About if I go to the URL slash clock, which components will we see on the screen? Once we're going to hear my voice. All right, what do we think? Let's hear some Marvin. I kind of think, uh, I kind of think that's a special on screen. I think that exact 
We're going to be at slash clock. The URL. Oh, right. oh, uh, I don't think we're okay, I think it's going to only show home just because that's the first one. So it's going to choose one of the components. It's going to be the first one. So it's only going to it's show. It's going to be this whole route with both homes in there? Or yeah. This? Okay. Cool. What else? What other guesses? Any other guesses? Kelvin. I think it's going to only show clock because since it's pushing that route and component, it's only going to show the first one. Okay, it's only going to show clock, is Kelvin's guess. Okay. Any other guesses? All right, let's go see. Um, it shows just the home components, right? Because. Because why? Because home is the first match inside there. Because even though, are we on clock? I just want to make sure. Oh, well, we were on dog, but same difference, yeah? Um, even though clock gives us future match, switch only allows for one component to come back. And since we don't have an exact right now on our path of home, it's still matching. All right, so let me ask you this. If I take this route and I move it to below those, what are we going to see now? We're on, we're on. Still clock. Still clock. Slash clock. What are we going to see now? We're going to see clock. Tell why. Because clock is the first match. Well, we only see clock. Yes? Okay. Any other any other guess? Well, will clock match? How many components will switch allow to match? One. So what's it gonna show? Okay. Alright, that's the walk uh, that's the step walkthrough. And we got our clock. All right, so this is working as expected. So now we don't even need to have an exact necessarily on our path because it matches. That being said, I personally like to have exact on my path. Now, when we had exact on the path and we had the path on the top or whatever, we saw that the behavior now with the switch is still identical to before we had the switch, yes? So what's the point? What's the point of the switch? How can the switch be utilized in a helpful way? Any ideas? I would say just organization. Organization? Okay. Maybe. Isaiah? Think it'll be able to catch issues like this. Catch issues like this. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I see that that could definitely be a benefit. The idea that it's going to really illuminate if we want to show two things and it's not showing. Um, there's an even better answer out there still. Sin? I have a question. Oh, yeah. Can switch have a timer on it? No. Right. Interesting idea, though. Not that I'm not that I know of. You might be able to write your own like specialized version though, right? It's, again, it's just a wrapper. All right. Here it is. Ready? Path can take like regex things as well. And and matchers. Matchers and identify like things to match. Just like express. Who knows where I'm going with this? So I could say route, path, and I could say star. When will this hit? Every, yeah, Isaiah? Every time. This would hit every time if I didn't have a switch, right? Here, let's show you. So I'll show you the other old way of rendering functional components. Um, 
instead of writing component there, you could write render. And this took in, um, oops, sorry. And this also took JSX, and in that, it took a callback that returned some piece of information. So for now, I'll just return a div that says something went wrong. This was the old way of writing it. I'm so glad we don't have to write it like that anymore. Um, you would only have to write it like this if you were like passing props to your components. It's really annoying. Uh, you have no idea how lucky you are. Uh, just take my word for it, you're lucky. Um, oh, we should close this. Did I not close it? Okay. All right, so now let's go to our here and I click on home and I cl then I go to, let's say cats or whatever that says and we get a something went wrong. And then I can still click and get away from that. Right, if I didn't have the switch, there would be no way for me to do some kind of catch-all air handling, right? Because it would always say something went wrong at the bottom. And I can't do an exact route on a star. That doesn't make any sense. Because that star just means to match everything. So that's the advantage of the switch. Any questions on that? OK. That's right. Now I, I could now don't please don't take this literally, right? It doesn't have to say something went wrong. This could be a 404 page. This could be a whole component that just gives the user some sort of information. Like, hey, 404 page not found. I'm sure we've all found those before, like on GitHub, and then we're like, oh, all right, and then we click away from there. So same kind of thing. If somehow the user gets to a a funky page. We can let them know. All right, so that's the switch. OK, so a couple more things I just want to briefly touch on is things that we get with router. So previously, when we submitted our form, the only thing that would happen was that little console log, yes, that had our first name and our last name. Let's pretend we live in a world where we would make an Axios post request to somewhere with the information, and then we would want to navigate to a different page. Right? Have we been in that situation before where we've signed in and gone to a new page? Yeah, I think we all have. If any of us, uh, we've all used the internet before. Yeah. <laughs> boom, boom. All right. So let's make a. Let's make a person component that we will push to and end up on that person component. And that person component won't do much. It will just show our name. OK? Uh, so what do, what do I want to do? Let's go to components. Let's make a, a new file called person.js. Right? This is going to be a pretty boring component. Import react from react const person. Uh, I'm not going to even pass, well, yeah, I'm not going to pass any props in this one. And I'm going to return, for now I'm going to return null, but, well, I'll just, I'll, I'll return a div that has, I'll just say person for now. And let's export that. So let's make a route that sends us to person. Not a link, just a route. Um, yep. Is it curly braces or parentheses? What are we talking about? For what are we talking about? Oh, that should be a parentheses. I'm sorry. Nice catch. 
Very, very good catch. All right, so it's not doing a whole lot. That's cool with me. Um, and what I want to do inside of my app is just make a new route here. So we'll say route. And I'm going to do this just to kind of show that some information. But I'm going to say path. And I want my path to be slash people slash and I can do wildcards in here, just like we did in Express. So I'll say colon, and let's say ID. OK. Let's close that. And we will render our person inside of here. And we have to import person as well. Well, this Any questions on that? All right, so all person does, is it's just some blanket thing right now that just says the word person. It doesn't do anything. But we're, but we're saying we want this to happen on the path people slash wildcard ID. All right, so this should match any time we hit on that ID. So let, let's just show an example. Uh, we'll get rid of our form here at the top. If I say people, will this match? No, we'll get something went wrong. But if I say slash Corey, uh, we get our person, right? It's just a component of this person. And then we can link away from that. OK, so when we submit our form, let's go to this page. OK, and we'll, we'll make it say the person's name, of their first name for what it, whoever submitted. In real life, we would make a request to log in, and we would get back that user's ID, and then we would push to that ID. But in this case scenario, we'll just use the names. Uh, OK, so inside of our form component, let's go back to our form.js. And in here, we have this handle submit. Yes? All right, I'm going to put a debugger in there. So we can see some stuff. So remember, form is now being wrapped by a router component. It's happening. Uh, where the heck is it? Oh, right here. Right. Form is being wrapped. So with that, we might be getting some new information. Okay. This is why this we're going to have this. All right. So we go to form. Let's go ahead and fill this out. I'll say Corey. Uh, I'll say Sky. Ice cream, yes, agree. Uh, yes, of course I agree. And I submit. We hit our debugger. And let's go learn about what we've got available to us. So uh, let me make that a little bigger. So the first thing I like to look at sometimes if I'm lost of where I am is I type in this just to see what this is, OK? So we see that we are in the class form. And then we've got a few things available to us, right? We've got our props, the context, reps, updater, state, etc. So what have we mostly been interested in up to this point? Well, props and state, right? So we've been doing a lot of this dot state. I don't know why it's on all caps. I, I'm sorry. This dot state. Right, we can see, OK, that's, that is the information we filled out. So that's what I'll send back to my back end. Right? And then I can do stuff. So let's go take a look at what our props is. Because I don't remember us passing any props. Do you? OK. Right? We didn't pass props into this component before. Uh, so where are these props coming from? The router. Right? They're coming from the router. So it gives us all these things for free. It gives us a history. Uh, history tells us uh, some things, uh, uh, like a location. Uh, the important thing from history is it usually has a couple methods. It has push and pop. 
Push allows us to move to a new page. Hop allows us to go back. Uh, we can see in our location we have our path name slash form. Um, we don't really care too much about this. The other things that is kind of cool is match. Match has our path, our URL, right? So maybe it's exact match, maybe it's not. It has is exact. In this case, our URL and our path are identical, so they are exact. And it also has this cool params key, uh, which in this case, params is an empty object. That said, if I had a wildcard here from my form, like colon something else, we would see that key inside of our params. Okay, uh, I, can, I guess I can prove that to you pretty easily. Um, let's just add a new path to our form, that's fine. Or I'll say form slash, uh, form colon, hello. Okay, and let's just fill out that form again. Let's refresh. Uh, great. Uh, now, form is not really matching, so I'll just say yowza, yowza, and we get to our form component, right? And we'll say Corey, Nadovsky, ice cream, ice cream. I think we have to agree. That's kind of annoying. Submit, we get our debugger. This time we'll say uh, this.props. We'll say this.props. This.props.match. Dot params. And now we can see that we have these params for We have the key hello. That's the, that's the wildcard I specified in the route, pointing to Yalza, which just happens to be in the form path. Okay, so this is given to us for free with router. So that's pretty cool. Any questions on that? So this is a piece you'll be interested in a lot if you're using class components. You'll be interested in this.props.match.params. Uh, that's very common. You'll also like this.props.history.push or .history.pop if you're using class components. So let's go ahead and use the push. So inside of our form, uh, I'm going to change this back though, just so the rest of the app doesn't like keep breaking. Yeah. Um, in our form, let's go ahead and say this. Dot props, dot history, dot push, and now I can say the path I want to push to. So let's say I want to push to slash people, slash, and I just put in the first name, right? So this makes one string. Here, I'll, I'll use string interpolation. Maybe that will be a little bit uh, more friendly for us. This.props.history.push slash people first name. Questions yet? All right, so let's let's give this a shot. Let's refresh our page here. Let's see if we can get out of the debugger. Oh, it's so nice to us. Good. Uh, I'll get out of the Yowza. I don't, don't need it. Okay. And we'll say, let's go ahead and say, Lil, Mama, Lodowski, uh will agree. We submit. And now we are in people slash, I think it says Lil Mama, or yeah. Mama, or whatever. And we see that now we're seeing the component that just says person. So that's pretty cool. Whoops. Daisies. Um, okay. 
and we can still navigate around to other pages, right? So we saw how we had this.props.params. This.props.match.params. We could say ID or hello, right? So in person, can we render the name that matches here? That's the question. Well, we would like to be able to, right? So as it is in our app.js, person is being set up in our route like this. In the new style, yes? So the new style isn't exactly passing those props. And I can prove that to you in person. I will put props here just so you see. And I will put a debugger here. Save it. Thank you. And we're in there and we see props is an empty object and we don't have it this. Hmm, damn. So the reason this is happening is purely because of the new way it's being written from the 2017 anomaly, uh, September 2019, my apologies. I don't know why I said 2017. It's like, I'm thinking about something else. Uh, I'm thinking about something that happened in 2017. Uh, don't ask. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so how do we get around this? Well, this is our, gonna be our first miniature touch on hooks. So React Router DOM has already added hooks into their, um, into their API there, into their docs. And hooks are kind of cool. They all start with the word use. And so we can go ahead and import Let's say we care about specifically the params. We can import use params from React Router DOM. Right now, I can only use hooks in functional components. You cannot use hooks in a class component. That's why, in order to use those props like history and stuff, I for my classes I had to write them that older way where I say component in the route. But if it's a functional component, we still have access to everything, but we have it through hooks. So now I can say, hey, I want to use my params. And I'll, I'll leave the debugger here, but let's go ahead and go const, um, well, I'll just say like params for now, is equal to use params, so this is a method, a method that we can invoke. So I'm gonna call this, and then we're gonna hit our debugger, and we're gonna see what params is. Okay? So it's not too like devastatingly different here. It's just another thing, that's all. Oh, well we don't need props because we're really not passing it. Good catch. Uh, okay, so now we hit our debugger. All right, this might be the old debugger. Let me refresh to make sure. Oh, it's gonna like do the thing, yeah. Local host three thousand slash people slash query. Enter. Uh, open up my console. Oops. Okay. Open up the console. Clear it. Refresh. Okay, and now we see that we have our params. Right? If we look at our variable, it's those are the params from the URL. So that's a pretty easy way to access it. Right? I, I can use the object destructuring. 
So instead of saying params like that here, I can make this a little cleaner and say ID. Oops. And so instead of writing just the person, let's go ahead and just show the ID. Okay, shall we try? Go back, we refresh, see if it will play nice for us. Just one more time. It's not playing nice at all.